We saw a lot of unexpected moments in this year's NCAA Track and Field Championships. However, one of the more interesting stories that really hasn't been covered so far is what happened with Matthew Bowling, because last season, he was one of the dominant forces in both the 100 and the 200 meters, and he also ran various relay splits that were quite amazing. But this season, his times weren't nearly as fast, and he didn't have hardly any impact when it came to the NCAA Finals. So for this video, we're going to take a look at what exactly happened with Matthew Bowling, and we'll figure out exactly what his future is in track and field. Now, despite what a lot of people think at the moment, Matthew Bowling is still running decent times. Granted, they're not as fast as it was in 2022, but if we take a look at his 200 meters in this year's NCAA preliminary rounds and the NCAA championships, he's actually still running quite fast. On May 24th, he ran a time of 20.17, which at the moment is his season's best under legal conditions. However, for the NCAA finals, he wasn't quite able to make it out of the semifinals as he finished fourth in this race with a time of 20.25 seconds. Now, it's actually quite unfortunate when you take a look at the overall results of the semifinals. Up front, you had an amazing time of Udoni Anruzurike at 19.76, followed closely by Courtney Lindsay at 19.88, and then there was Tarsus Oregod and Robert Gregory. And looking at the big picture here, in order to make it to the finals, you had to be one of the top nine qualifying runners out of the opening three heats. And unfortunately for Matthew Bowling, he finished in 10th, and he finished 10th by just 1 100th of a second. With this time of 20.25, he finished just 1 100th behind David Dunlap from Northern Arizona. So even though he didn't make it to the finals, he was the absolute closest that he could possibly be for making it to this next stage. Now, I very much doubt that he would have played a big role come the finals, as Anwuzurike, Courtney Lindsay, Oregat, and Gregory all threw down amazing times in the finals. But it is important to showcase that Matthew Bowling did get quite close. He just wasn't quite able to make it to the next stage. Now, the 200 meters has certainly been a big event for Matthew Bowling over the previous few years. But one of the races that I really think deserves more attention was what happened in the 4x400 meter relay finals. Because even though the University of Georgia only finished in 7th here, Matthew Bowling actually ran another pretty solid leg, and it came on the second relay leg of this 4x4. Now, before we go any further, we have to mention that the University of Florida and Arizona State ran unbelievable times here. Florida broke the collegiate record with a time of 257.74, and Arizona State ran the third fastest performance in NCAA history at 257.78. For this relay, a total of three teams ran under three minutes, with UCLA running a time of 259.74. However, we're going to go back to the second leg here, because after Christopher Williams from the University of Georgia opened his first relay split in around 46 to 46.5 seconds, Matthew Bowling got the baton and definitely found himself in a rather undesirable position, and even though he was close to the back of the field, he actually made some pretty solid progress despite a very challenging final 100. If you'll notice, after about 100 meters of running, Bowling was next to last, only in front of the University of Arkansas at this point. However, he started making some pretty solid progress with around 150 meters remaining. But, coming down the home stretch, he got pushed to the outside lane, and when I say pushed, I don't mean the second, third, or even fourth lane. He was all the way out in lane five, which is definitely not a good position if you're wanting to run a fast time here. Now, Bowling's relay split here was not quite the fastest, as that time went to Justin Robinson from Arizona State, who ran a final leg of 43.92 seconds. However, Matthew Bowling did run close to 44 seconds for this second leg, even though he was all the way out in lane five. Now, I've said this before, and many of the comments from you guys definitely echo this sentiment. Matthew Bowling is a very talented 400 meter athlete, and I think he should seriously consider running more open 400 meters. Despite running up against many talented one lap athletes, and also running all the way out in lane five, he still ran a second leg around 44 seconds, which is pretty incredible considering that he didn't run that well in the 200 meters, his form just hasn't quite been where it has been in the past. But, despite all of these obstacles, he still ran very quickly, and I do want to point out something rather important here. For the opening 800 meters, the University of Georgia split a time of 1 minute 30.63 seconds, 
and usually they're around 129 to 128.5. But the reason that they weren't quite as fast here is because one of their primary 400 athletes, Elijah Godwin, had pulled out of this relay citing leg issues. So this definitely added a big complication for UGA. And again for the opening leg of Christopher Williams, he was around 46 seconds to 46.5. So the math does add up The Matthew Bowling conservatively ran around 44 seconds for this relay leg. Earlier in the season, he ran in the Texas relays where he split a time of around 43.7, and he did this with a rather intentional, relaxed opening 200, and then a very quick following 200 meters. And I think this relaxed to intense running really does benefit Matthew Bowling in the 200 meters. He's naturally quite fast over 200, and he does have the strength to match. So given this new relaxed running, it really has paid dividends for him. And even though the University of Georgia only finished seventh in this four x 400 relay, I still see Matthew Bowling as a very talented athlete right now. And the biggest, biggest reason why we really didn't see him have that much of an impact, especially in the 200 meters, was because this just might have been the all-time greatest men's 200 meter field in NCAA history. Come the finals, we had four athletes running under 19.9 seconds. Again, with Anwuzarike winning in 19.84. And even though Matthew Bowling's 20.17 performance from earlier in this season is a pretty solid time, it just wasn't quite there for the NCAA Finals. However, I will say this 4x400 relay leg was one of the more impressive relay splits on the day. It just kind of went unnoticed given the incredible performances that were happening up front. At this point in the season, I honestly do not know what to expect from Matthew Bowling moving forward. I think there's a chance that he might move forward to compete in this year's United States National Championships. That being said, I'm not familiar with exactly what times will be needed to qualify in the 200 meters. He ran last season against a very talented field and actually even made it to the finals. However, his times this year and overall running is just slightly behind where it was last year but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not gonna run well in the future. And now that his final NCAA season is now behind him, the future does remain uncertain. And with this in mind, I wanna pass this final question to all of you. How exactly do you evaluate Matthew Bowling's 2023 NCAA season, and what do you think will happen to Matthew Bowling moving forward? Thanks for watching, everyone, and as always, until next time.